Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you. So you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. Well, hello, everybody. It's your host with the most, Andy Smith, 32-year veteran of the comic book industry, here with another exciting book look. I grab a book off my shelf. Go through it page by page so you can see if it's something you might want to buy. All right, guys. How to Draw Noir Comics. The Art and Technique of Visual Storytelling by Sean Martinbro. Uh, this book is cool. I will admit I love comics that have nice, chunky, solid black spotting like this. Uh, Alex Toth is definitely one of the main guys you want to go look at that just does this stuff phenomenally. He was doing it 50, 60 years ago. Obviously, Alex is no longer with us. Uh, Frank Miller uh, started doing it in his Sin City work. He was doing it some uh, to an extent in his Daredevil work. Uh, lots of artists have adapted this style. Mike Mignola, it works great for black and white comics. It also works really well for full color as well. Um, but full color, really, you only need kind of like a nice flat color on it. You don't need a lot of rendering uh, color when you color this stuff. Uh, I love this stuff. I try to uh, do stuff like this in my work as well. Um, so let's dive into it. This book came out in 2007. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Sean is an artist that's worked for uh, DC Marvel. He's been all over the place. He's done some great Batman stuff. Um, of course, the tools, the basics, creating mood with shadow and light, visualizing the script, page layout, staging action, creating drama, designing covers. Uh, Greg Rucka gives an introduction here, a little preface by the author. Just, that's just so cool. It really takes to me a lot of, a lot of hoops, chutzpah, a lot of guts to do this because I like drawing out everything, but just doing something like this just looks so moody. Heck, you could even probably get rid of that ear and it would really focus more just on the face, but you know, it's cool. All right, so the tools. We know you've seen enough book looks uh, talking about the different types of ink and pencils, uh, different types of pen points. Not sure he talks about brushes. What ink is he using? I always like to see. Uh, search for the perfect type ink, blah, blah, blah. We're tanned so passing. For me, the permanency is desired. Yep, permanent ink means that if it's exposed to water, the ink will not run. Uh, retain its thickness for the opacity. Do, 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 do. Uh, he prefers his original work to be camera ready or pure black and white to the naked eye. Uh, that is the difference. My my work is a little more uh, grayed out because of the ink I use, but it is permanent. Uh, let's see. So he's just, I was just reading through the ink. So his favorite brand of ink is Rapidograph Black India Universal. This comes in small plastic tubes designed for use with fillable tech pens, but it works well for Croquil. Um, I have that. I haven't used it in a while. I might have to try it again, though. Uh, technical pens, Sharpies, all sorts of things. You, whatever works. Brushes, of course. Uh, rulers and templates. Uh, erasers. Nice whiteout pen. This is a good whiteout pen to use, by the way. 
uh, artboard. He talks about the smooth and the vellum finish. Okay, basics. The basics. Uh, so he, he he's breaking down the basics of uh, learning to draw first. Uh, this doesn't go in... I, I haven't looked at this book. Like I said, I just pulled it off my shelf. So I haven't looked at it in a while. I don't recall the book going into like how to draw anatomy and things like that. It's not that type of a book. It's about uh, really doing noir, really high contrast, lots of uh, blacks and shadows in your artwork. A good way, obviously, to get that look is photography, getting a camera, you want to use black and white so you can see the tones and stuff. It's on the line. Talks about using line to capture the gesture of your subject. Uh, sometimes somebody will just take out a piece of paper after they do their initial drawing and like say like that and I'll put tracing paper over it and take a sharpie and just play with different ways of spotting the black areas on it and such and then when they see what they like they'll do it you know with the real ink and then once you do that enough you can uh, see it in your mind's eye to just go right to the ink and do it so a couple different ways to to do this these faces here these portraits See, like, I think this works really well as a nice graphic. Obviously, this punches it up better. Huge. It's huge. So, yeah, I mean, he's basically going over portraits. This is nice with the Ghost Rider to see the different techniques on these different drawings and stuff. And just how much uh, the black can add to it. It just adds weight and solidity that you don't get with open line like this. Of course, with today's coloring, uh, great colors could make these just work fantastic as well. But I kind of like the old school of making it work in black and white. I don't read a lot from the books because with the book look, I want you to be able to see every page, but I don't want to just do a dictation of these books, you know, because if you like what you see, go buy it. Obviously, you could pause and just read some of the stuff. This is cool. Once again, uh, the simple contour and then going in and spotting the blacks to frame up the main object of what we're looking at here. The power of suggestion. Here, a lot more is drawn out in the face. Here, your eye fills in a lot of the gaps. Very, uh, there's an artist in the 80s, Nagel, that uh, worked like that. That's N-A-G, as in girl, E-L. Same here. This is a cool approach. I actually like this one better. It's more graphic, not showing the details of the face and coat, but that works. Uh, just the form. So this is really talking about, like, silhouettes. This is what I was talking about. You do your rough first and once you get your rough down if it works like this it'll definitely work when you add the details he talks about that too do not draw details do not draw facial features same thing when you do a thumbnail for a page you don't want to concern yourself with the details you just want to get the major shapes down and stuff and when it comes to spotting blacks like this it's about getting the black shapes down and the shadows down going through different different steps here have an exercise and lighting this is cool showing different ways like you know I always default when I draw to stuff like this you know um, and I'm trying to do incorporate more like this or a nice in between oh yeah cars you can get away with a car like this, no problem, but when you add the blacks to it, especially in this view, it just looks so shiny. And this can be any color. You color this car white, and it would just be a white car that's really shiny with the lighting. So that's what's cool. You don't always have to do this and go, well, I guess it's a dark colored car now. 
uh, shadows. I mean, this works, but I think this works better because it adds a little more depth to it. The making of a graphic novel, high contrast. Once again, nice little uh, sketch here, just to lay it in, nice little thumbnail. Visualizing the script, so this is cool. I love this, once again, you see his thumbnail, you see the final page. This has all the information you need for spotting the black areas and stuff and getting your compositions down. If it works in this stage, it'll always work in this stage. Uh, talking about the artist-writer collaboration. Uh, using reference, you definitely want to use reference. Here he talks about designing characters, and when you design characters, it's good to look at real-life things for reference. And then using reference goes for anything, whether it's, you know, cars, trucks, guns, buildings, you know, landscapes. It's always good. Uh, designing characters, you can, same thing, start off with rough sketches and then tighten them up. Uh, Brian Stelfreeze is another fantastic artist that works in this style and just does it so great. Uh, the late, great Jason Pearson, who passed away last year, another fantastic artist who was great at doing this noir stuff. Uh, Adam Hughes is as well. Here it's talking about designing locations, getting your references and such. The making of a graphic novel. So he goes into some storytelling as well. Uh, camera angles, different shots, what they evoke when you want to use them. Page layout. Once again, nice simple here. Spotting of the blacks and you can see it finalized here. The thumbnail sketch. I might have thrown this earlier on in the book, but he does go over the importance, kind of like things I've been saying about, this is where you get your composition down, your shapes, how you want the panels to flow from one to another, spotting the black placement and stuff. And of course, it's not set in stone. You can make adjustments as you, you know, move along throughout the page. People see this and they think it's easy. They look at like Mike Mignola. I've talked to people that really aren't artists and they're like, oh, that's just easy to do. It's really not. You've got to put a lot of thought into how you arrange the black areas and stuff. So you want to give a nice flow through the page and arrange them so you kind of have, like this has a nice curvature to it. And you want to have a nice balance. You don't want to just, uh, chunk up a page of of uh, with heavy blacks at like the top and then have nothing at the bottom. It'll throw off the balance of the page. You want the page to have a nice weight to it. Talking about word balloon placement. Oh, this is cool. This is from one of the jobs he did. Uh, it's from Detective Comics, 761. Talking about backgrounds, and even when you can lose backgrounds, this is a vignette where there's no panel border and no background. This can give a feeling of more loneliness because it's just the figure and the object compared to this that shows the backgrounds and such. Framing the figure. So this is nice, giving examples of probably what to do, what not to do. Oh, this is really cool. I like this. Obviously, there would be more detail over here, but it really, the lack of it really pushes you over to here. And if I was the colorist, I would color, uh, I would color this uh, normal and then have it fade darker going this way to the right. Oh, man, I, I just so love this stuff. I got to keep this book next to my desk so I can reference it. Staging action, of course, very important. So Alex Toth. Guys, go look at Alex Toth. 
preparing for action. Very cool looking Batman right there. Just so simple. Kevin Nolan, another artist that is great at this. Kevin Nolan did a Secret Origin of the Man Bat story back in the 80s, which he did really graphic. He didn't use really any rendering. It was just hardcore black and white like this. It's just, it's gorgeous. Ah, nice. Talking about background, middle ground, and foreground. Establishing those planes helps to establish depth in your panels. Perspective. Once again, it's not a how-to book, so he's not going into how to draw perspective. Like, here's how to do one point, two point, three point. He assumes, this book really assumes you know how to draw figures and perspective and things like that. It just goes in to the details of how to use those things more effectively and with spotting these heavy uh, black areas. That's all. That's what this book is about. So if you have trouble doing that, this book would be very uh, helpful to you. The making of a graphic novel, action. Lights, camera, action. This is great. You get the sense of him falling. This is bad because his knee's touching the panel border. You don't get a background. He's centered. You don't know where he's at in relation. This is really, really well done right here. Creating drama. Creating drama? Well, if, you if you're in a relationship, you know all about drama. <laughs> Just kidding. Been married uh, happily for going on 28 years at the end of October. Love my wife. Setting the stage for drama. This is awesome. Really get a sense of motion through that. Great graphic design there. Beautiful perspective that he talked about earlier with the sentinels and just the uplighting. And the thing too is when you do spot blacks like this, you can do what they call theatrical lighting. So it doesn't have to follow the exact rules of lighting, which is cool. why shadows work for drama i mean you take this and make this no shadows at all just like a coloring book there'd be no drama to it there'd be no no sense of excitement or or uh even fear in a way this just adds so much weight when you spot the blacks like that more thumbnails and finished pages uh dramatic rain rain is a great effect uh, you don't have to get too over the top with it. This is a great example of doing it in a more simplistic style. The making of a graphic novel, drama. So once again, going into uh, different shots and stuff and what makes them more dramatic. And then he goes into designing covers, which is cool. Uh, I like drawing covers, but I've never considered myself one of the greats when it comes to cover doing covers uh i like doing storytelling covers more than like these more abstract movie poster type covers but i do love looking at them when they're done right and uh there's just so many great cover artists out there that do these so well i don't know i should try something like this maybe for uh cordrath volume two and, and uh, there you go. Look, one of my old business cards is in here. This was a business card. I know you don't care, but it's here. I used to give out. Uh, it was more for the advertising aspect of things I did to show the different examples of stuff I could do. And then, of course, on the back, I showed off the two how to draw books and a little caricature of myself. Look at that fancy. And then I guess this is an example of a graphic novel called The Truce that uh, he, uh, he wrote and illustrated. Um, might have to look this up, see if it's out, see if this is something I can buy because uh, it looks cool. Like, man, I love the simplicity of this car. I would be so drawn into wanting to do more detail and stuff, but that is all you need. Same with these buildings. I wonder at the end if he says where you can buy the graphic novel. Kind of flipping through this faster because this is probably his own. I mean, the whole book is his own work, but 
a eh, graphic novel. If you like what you see as I'm flipping through it, go check it out. Very nice. And this is what I mean. You've got this heavy lighting on his face, right? And the shadows off his nose. Now in real life, his head would be casting a shadow over here on his shoulder. But in comics, you can uh, make those decisions not to do that. So you focus more on a certain area. The end. Oh, well, well, did you look at that? This was just a little graphic novel he did just for this book. So there you go. 2007, 16-year-old book. Everything he talks about still holds up. Uh, I highly recommend it. If it's available, I will, of course, post a link in the description below. Go check it out. It's a fantastic book. Guys, as of now, Cordrath is over. Um, the campaign closed last night. Uh, I'm still going to play the trailer every now and then. Indiegogo doesn't pull things down when you want them to. So if you haven't backed it and you're hoping you still can, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, go check it if you can. If you can't and it's done, the good news is it's going to the printer this week. It'll be in your hands soon. Thank you so much for your support over this past year, this journey you took with me, creating Cordrath the Reckoning uh, with Dennis Turner, my partner in crime on this book, and I. We really appreciate it. Like, sub subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment. It all helps with the algorithm. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.